The Meerkat project was a deep dive into a couple main areas for us. We wanted to continue some of the ongoing real-time fur exploration, and in parallel, we thought this would be a really amazing opportunity to look at uh, the production of offline rendered linear narrative media in the engine. While we worked directly with Epic's fur team and developers, we were bringing our deep understanding of the properties of hair, how it responds under different kind of lighting situations and helping them to kind of tune their systems and ensure it met our requirements. So at the beginning of the Meerkat project, I being the pessimistic that I am, I thought it would be impossible. We wanted to use this project as a bit of a test case really to kind of step back from our proprietary systems and work with more vanilla off-the-shelf toolkits, really. Our modeler, Nathan, would actually grow the fur in Yeti and at that point import it into Unreal. The main thing I was worried about was whether we could actually use a film-level asset in real time. To be honest, I was quite surprised. Like, the first time we built that meerkat groom, her name's Molly the meerkat, uh, Molly had like a full dense groom that we would use in film and we were like, oh, okay, that's our ground truth, but that's probably not gonna work in the engine. And then the first time we dropped it in the engine, it was surprisingly pretty performant. I think the initial groom would have been maybe seven or 800,000 strands. When that happened, I definitely think I was like, okay, I think we can probably pull something off pretty cool here. To make realistic fur, one of the first things that needs to be done is to make sure that the shading of the fur is physically correct. Unreal shading system is actually quite similar to how Weta's works. So it looked visually really great off the bat in the engine, which was great. We tried as best as possible to recreate those kind of biological processes that deal with the release and the timing of pigments. So all of that stuff in the materials is live, essentially allow us to change the, the timing of those release mechanisms and shift the, the patterning along the length of the individual strands to recreate what you see in a meerkat or a, a martial eagle feather. Even for film, doing birds and feathers is definitely a challenge. It was definitely a science experiment for us just to see whether we could pull it off. The feathers on the eagle pose some unique challenges. So the solution that we ultimately settled on was to take the strand that represents the spine of each individual feather and turn that into geometry and then push that geometry into our skeletal meshes. So all of the individual spines for each feather became part of the rig and that allowed um, Unreal Engine to then deal with the projection of the barbs on the feather so that we could get everything kind of behaving together and moving as you would expect in the engine. The one we actually ended up using was about 3.7 million strands. Yeah, it definitely required a hell of a lot more strands to really create that proper feather shape. But it surprisingly was pretty successful. Our animators were working in Maya. We worked with LiveLink quite a bit, um, which was really important for the animators, I think, in terms of giving them a direct kind of understanding and, and visual response for the various poses, the shapes and read of the fur volume under different lighting situations. That's the big ad of this yeah. whole workflow. On the VFX movies, when you have something with fur, you have to expect filtration of bake and render. You have a long road to go before to have feedback on, on your motion. Most of the time there is frustration at the end because you don't have time anymore and you have to shut down the doors of the creativity. Where with this example now it was the opposite. I did some posing at the beginning with Grey Shade and I was like very happy with the pose. Once we had the fear on it, I was like, okay, this looks like a beer or something different. <laughs> Just because of the volume is, is so off. Particularly when you're dealing with characters with fear. Um, it's a little bit like you're animating a wet cat. You know that there's going to be all this change that's going to occur after you're done. You kind of have to imagine what that's going to be. It's one of the nice things about delivering in a real-time way like this. We can work more in parallel with the lighters, knowing that we can both be working on the shots right up to the very end. This project was insanely fun. You know, you, f you feel proud of the work that, that came out. You know, as you can see with Meerkat, with the, uh, the advances of the strand-based rendering uh, technology in Unreal, and with off-the-shelf tools, talented artists are able to create some really beautiful work. Anyone in their basement can just start coming up with cool little creatures, and it's more about the creativity and the amount of skill and artistry that people can bring into it.